Your dead comrades are waiting for you. I'll deal with this. What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today we're going to be talking about my initial thoughts on ML Ravi. Originally born in a small village, she was chosen to become an incarnation of the God of War before accidentally falling into another dimension while fighting an enemy general. She has no memories of her life before she was deified. Her specialty is she's an infernal gatekeeper where ever she goes pandemonium follows. Now Ravi has a very very interesting skill kit and you guys might have heard me say this before but when I was talking about Apocalypse Ravi on stream I had mentioned that to me I think that she's probably going to be the easiest ML hero to build to date because the way that her skills are set up. With her third skill Deliverance Soul Exchange she delivers divine judgment down upon the enemy. When an enemy is defeated, revives one random dead ally with 10% health before granting skill nullifier damage. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. So we have some minus cooldown here, goes down to a 4 turn cooldown max, and some damage increases. Now, the beautiful thing about this ability is, since she's going to be a bruiser type, you pretty much, all you have to really do on this particular hero is get some HP, some defense, maybe some resistance, high crit, high crit damage, right? You're just going to make her as tanky as possible. When you guys see what her base stats are, you guys will understand why it's going to be a lot easier to build her than a lot of other ML heroes. Now, the big thing about this is I mentioned when we first looked at Apocalypse Ravi, I didn't know where she was going to shine at, but now seeing her abilities, I think she's going to shine mostly in a Guild War situation, mainly because her skill 3 is only a single target. If this was an AoE, then that would definitely change her utility a little bit. Could she be used in a Bruiser Arena comp, let's say if you want to pair her with like a Corvus or something like that, or well, absolutely. Or you could even potentially think about doing a Triple Revive comp if you're running like SS Sakati, Israel, and her, because she's still a threat, then you would have a heal plus the revive. And you can run pretty much whatever you wanted for your front line. So there are going to be a lot of options that you guys can look at with this skill 3. Especially with her multipliers basically almost being as much as Ken's. Now when we look at her skill 2, War God's Might, critical chance increases by 5% for every 20 fighting spirit. Consumes 10 fighting spirit to recover health after being attacked. So basically every time she's attacked she's going to consume fighting spirit to heal herself. Now the amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's max health, begins the first battle with 50 fighting spirit. And then of course the heal upgrades for the passive. And the thing about this is every time if you max heal this she's going to be healing for like 10% of her HP every time she gets attacked, every time she gets attacked. So it's going to be up to you to maximize the amount that she heals. Now the thing that I'm curious about with this ability is if this ability is going to stack with things like Shimadra Staff. Because if this stacks with Shimadra Staff and you can get the 40% extra healing, especially if you're pairing this with another Soul Weaver, then this healing could actually be a little bit ridiculous. Especially if you're running a multi-Soul Weaver comp. Let's say, for instance, if you guys are running that real well, and SS Sakatis, SS Sakatis, let's say, is on either Celestine or Rod of Amarius, or Idol's Cheer, or pretty much anything that's going to grant extra turns and or give that opportunity to heal and then the same thing with Ruel. I think things could be quite a bit interesting. If you anticipate putting Durandale on Apocalypse Rabbi as well and getting her the extra turns that could be nice. Apocalypse Rabbi could also be really really good on the new artifact that we can get from Guild War. War God's Might is one of those passives that could be really really effective depending on how you want to build her or what type of team composition you want to use Apocalypse Rabbi in. As we move to her skill 1 she attacks the enemy with an axe absorbing some of the damage dealt this health. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. Now when you soul burn this it greatly increases the damage and the multiplier gets pretty insane but you gotta understand that with this attack it does not trigger a dual attack. For those of you guys who have seen regular Ravi you guys have seen how hard regular Ravi can hit on a soul burn so you guys gotta understand that most of the damage is going to be probably coming from the burned S1 in a situation where you're able to manual again aka guild wars or any type of PvP situation. Now, the question is, is when we look at Apocalypse Ravi, is could you use her in a PvE circumstance? And my answer to that is absolutely yes. Because when we look at her skill 3, the cooldown is low enough to where you absolutely could put her in a PvE circumstance, especially if any other members on your team die. If you guys are running with, you know, let's say a bruiser comp, she could definitely fit there. The biggest thing is just going to be making sure that she's able to sustain herself. 
and other members on the team or party are able to sustain her as well. Now, as we look at her base stats, you guys can start to understand why I say that I think that she'll be a lot easier to build for a lot of people. Now, if you look at her base health at six star max, it's 7,054. So it's gonna be really, really easy to stack a lot of HP on her. Now, my advice to you guys is even though it's gonna be easy to stack HP, do not neglect her other stats. Period. The reason why you don't want to neglect her other stats is even if she has 30,000 HP and you guys are dealing significant damage, if you guys skimp on her defense, she will die and quickly. Okay, so that's something that you guys really want to pay attention to. Which she's not slow, but then she's not fast, but she's like right right in between so you could definitely get some speed on her if you want or you could run her slow and put her like on a counter build or or a double hp immunity build you can pretty much build her any type of way that you see fit for her in your box if you guys happen to pull her now when we look at her awakening the big thing here guys is she's just getting a bunch of health and defense so if you guys are going to be running high crit, make sure that you guys get those subsets through your gear because you will not find it through the Awakening stats. Apocalypse Ravi is going to be a threat to be reckoned with, and a lot of people I think are going to underestimate her ability. So if you guys don't pay attention to what she brings to the table, especially if you're fighting her in a Guild War composition, you guys could be in trouble, especially if the team that she's with includes some sustain and or some lockdown. Now, as we take a look at her multipliers, her skill one is going to be a 1.8 soul burn. And this is why I said, guys, you'll probably get a majority of her damage on the skill one. Her skill one is a 1.8 soul burn is the same as her skill three, but her skill three naturally, she's only going to be able to use, you know, every four turns if you have her max skill. Now, when we look at her power in conjunction with the multiplier, she about evens out to about kin strength. So on her first skill, she's going to deal 12% of her max health, 20% with the soul burn, which is absolutely insane. Not only that, but 30% of the damage is gained as life plus 20 fighting spirit every time she uses that ability. So every time she's attacked, she's going to consume 10 fighting spirit to heal herself. Not only that is if you have her on a counter build, she will then use her skill one. She will deal 12% of her max health as damage and then 30% of that damage will also be regained as health. You guys can catch my drift here. And this is where Ravi by herself, or Apocalypse Ravi by herself, is when she's geared well with the right team, I think she's going to be really, really strong and really annoying to deal with. Now, when we look at her skill 2, like I said, the heal strength max is at 10.4% of her max health. So you're going to want to max that skill 2 as soon as you possibly can, and then, of course, maximize on the damage. Now, unfortunately, with this hero, when we look at Molagora, this is not a hero that you're going to be like, well, I'll just Molagora one skill and that's it. This is definitely going to be a full investment hero, so you're definitely going to want to go all Molagora into this hero if you intend on using her pretty much anywhere, because you're going to want to maximize on the heal on her passive, you're going to want to maximize on the damage on her skill 1. And then when we look at her skill 3 with the 1.8 multiplier, she deals 20% of her max health here, and she gains plus 50 fighting spirit. So it's it's really, really good. Like, And she's going to be able to stack that fighting spirit pretty consistently. And then with her ability to sustain and the fact that she scales with, with max HP, she's going to be really, really useful in a lot of different situations. Now, if you guys are wondering about builds, like, all right, what type of gear should I put on ML Ravi? And that's entirely up. If I was looking at her kit and I was like, and I pulled ML Ravi today, I myself would probably put her either A on a counter set, or if I was trying to go full health, I'd definitely get some health sets from Giants maybe some immunity and or some resistance. If I was going to be building her slow, I'd make sure that she had at least 100% resistance no matter what. I'm definitely shooting for 100% crit, period. No ifs, if, ands, or buts about it. If there's a stat that I think that you should not slack on, it's her crit rate. Now, I understand that her passive gives her some crit rate for every 20 fighting spirit that she has, up to a total of 25%, but at the same time, I don't think I would wanna be in that position where let's say if I was starting off combat that I had to wait in order for her to ramp up to 100. I would just want her as high crit as possible just so I can just have her where I need her to be initially. So if I need her to stomp somebody out, especially if I'm pairing her with a mage on Taga Hell's Ancient Book, she can do what she has to do, right? With that being said, I'm sure there's ways that you can get around this. Like if you guys want to run her with low crit and let's say like an ML Dom or something, and that's definitely your prerogative, but I'm just telling you what I would do. There's pretty much no limit to how you could build her. You could put her on a speed set. You could put her on an attack set with super high HP subs and still get that extra attack damage 
if you want to maximize her damage output while still maybe putting her like on the HP ring, crit damage neck with like a HP boot, and then just kind of maximizing her stats through subs. But with ML Ravi, guys, it's pretty much you can you can build her any way you want, and it's wide open. So it's, what it's going to boil down to is the actual gear that you have, and then when you lock that into place, you can have a lot of fun with this hero. I could say that you guys can expect to see her with Crimson Armin and Healer a lot. You guys are going to see Healer, Crimson Armin, ML Ravi. Case in point, somebody could put a Rin, regular Rin, and there for the defense break in the strip, Crimson Armin for the stat, because remember regular Rin has a heal as well and then ML Ravi with the self sustain it could be it could be a fun time especially if their team is speed tuned and Moravi is going to be really, really strong in a lot of different comps. And I can't wait to see exactly what she brings to the table if I get my hands on her. But anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below. And I'd be happy to assist. And we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.